Okay, so good morning, afternoon, evening, whoever you are, wherever you might be. Thanks for watching here today to give a little uh, help to my friend Greg, um, who uh, needs a bit of a hand in figuring out how to split the D a little bit more efficiently and get not only past the defense, but back into uh, a good position, center of the ice, to make a, a pass here. This actually comes from our game the other night against the Silverbacks, a 6-5 win. Ooh, means we didn't finish last place on the season. We finished seventh out of eight teams, but for a team that went so long without winning, um, nice to not finish last this past year. Let's get the microphone a little closer to you. Why not? We have some good quality mic here. Um, so let's watch the play here first. And Greg did score on this play, but he had to take the shot from a bad angle. Getting him back in the center is going to give him some options. We'll take a look at that here too. So uh, puck right now on the boards. And it's going to come back here. I'm sorry, now it's on the boards. Greg is our guy right here. He's going to come back here in center. And right here, he's got the puck. And what he has is a parting of the silver sea. Not red sea. We're playing the silverbacks in this one. Um, but he has a lane right up the middle here. And what Greg is going to do is he's going to take it up this lane. Uh, this defender here is going to force him to go a little bit wide. And then he can't get back into the middle. Um, so let's take a look and see what happens. He's able to take that puck. Takes a good first few strides. Gets some nice crossovers going in through here. And actually has a nice crossover to keep it away from uh, the silverback. And right here is where he's going to take the shot. Now, from a goalie's perspective, I'm pretty happy with how this set up. If I was you know, the opposing goalie um, taking the shot. Uh, because my defense has kept him wide. right? Kept him out of that prime real estate in the middle of the ice. Um, has given me a, a, a good angle. I think maybe uh, Eric could be a little bit further out. He's not at risk of a pass here, getting beaten to the far side. Probably come out and challenge a little bit more. Eric is so big that if he took a couple of steps out, uh, Greg's going to have absolutely nothing to hit here. Instead, he stayed kind of on his post. And Greg is going to take it. And I can't tell here from this far away where that sneaks through. But by the time Greg takes the shot, right, he's getting down low towards the crease. Oh, I lied. Okay, so there was a guy back door. I did not see that. So, okay, Eric was probably fine <laughs> staying where he was, covering against that uh, that play. Um, but, uh, you know, takes that shot and uh, is able to, to hit his target. I mean, he is getting far down. There's not really much of an angle here to shoot at, and this one kind of sneaks through. You know, Greg's got a great shot, a uh, great accuracy, and he's been on a, a tear recently, three goals, I think, in the last two games. So he's feeling it, which is great, able to get this one through. But if he can find a way to get back through to the center here and um, take a shot from center, it really opens up a lot of options instead of shooting from this sort of tough angle. Let's back it up a little bit and look at a couple of different things here. So first off, part of it is reading the play and coming from a mindset of if the puck comes to me right now, what am I going to do with it, right? It's kind of like in baseball. They teach you in Little League, you know, what are you going to do if the ball's hit to you? Where are you going to throw it, right? So you got to be thinking ahead in hockey too, right? And I think Greg was here because when he gets it and he realizes, okay, I've got the puck. There's nobody in front of me. He's immediately got his head up. He's off and running um, and uh, is able to go. Now, the... The, the key here is is a couple of different things. First off, this guy is not really going to come into the play. He starts off kind of close, but he gets burned by Greg pretty quick. This is our, our, our boy here that we're watching. Um, and he starts off facing the puck, facing away. Um, Greg uh, gets going fairly quickly with a full head of steam, um, but still takes him a few steps to get in stride. And look, he's kind of hedging his bets here because we've got somebody on this backside. So he starts to turn. And by the time he gets to here, all right, Greg's got the puck on his forehand. A little hard to see. But he's kind of brought it in closer to where our guy is. And he's going to put it on his backhand here to kind of keep it on the outside. Then brings it back forehand again, which allows um, our guy who has turned his hips now to chase after Greg um, to get a stick in there, right? So if you're going to do this kind of wide charge, you know, the first thing you want to do is say, okay, I'm able to beat this guy. Yep, okay, he's got a good step here. Now you've got this, this guy to deal with. Um, I'm going to show you a, a quick video from um, YouTube user iTrain Hockey. 
um, who uh, has a, a good demonstration of what we should be doing here. Um, but essentially keep that puck on the backhand side, pull it out here um, from the beginning, right? As soon as you realize that you're going to be sort of one-on-one -on -one with this guy, this guy's going to be out of the play, that allows you to use this offhand to control this, you know, control the uh, opposing player, keep his stick um, out of range until you can get around him and make a hard turn back to the center. Um, we'll also take a look at somebody that was able to do that to me recently and what that opened up. Fortunately, didn't score, which was great uh, because <laughs> they certainly could have on that play. Um, but we'll see kind of how that opens up goalies, especially in here in our beginners league at DU. Um, we're honestly, you know, we're goalies, but we're all still learning. So in any event, Greg's able to skate down. But if he keeps that on the backhand side, uses his offhand to um, and keep the defender at bay, keep the stick out, and then instead of going further wide here, cut back to the inside, right? Because you're able to say, okay, I'm able to keep his stick around. He's off balance. A couple of more steps, I'm going to beat him. Because I'm, what is he going to do from this stance, right? He doesn't have the ability to put a whole lot in there, right? If you can get him to that point where he's reaching and you're upright and, and, and steady, you can take a couple more strides or even just glide around him and make that hard turn back inside um, and start to think about how you're going to get that past the goalie next, right? So Greg, in this case, goes out wide. Doesn't make that hard turn back in. Still able to put it through. So kudos to Greg. Great shot. And we needed that. Final score was 6-5. to five. Um, So, you know, it was definitely a, a a key in the game. Without that, it's a, it's a different, uh, not a different ball game, a different puck game, right? Um, let's take a quick look at um, the... Demonstration here from I Train Hockey. I'm just going to take a quick glance and look what he's talking about. So I don't think you're going to get the audio for this because I don't think my capture card actually works <laughs> to capture audio. So I'll kind of go over with what he's talking about here. But again, he's talking about charging wide in the backhand stance, right? So you're starting off on your forehand, take it back to your backhand, use that arm to defend away the poke check, and use that lead leg. To get out in front, help you get leverage to push that stick out. And you can even make contact, that's fine. But there's that hard turn back inside. And once you're able to take that from your backhand to the forehand, you're able to get there um, and, and take a good shot. And you want to so focus on the separation. So take another two, three, four crossovers, right? So look at this hard charge when he first comes out here, right? Hard crossover charge, glide around. And then that's going to put you back in front. But those first couple of crossovers are key. Get the power there. Get your head of steam going as quickly as you can. It's a foot race, right? I kind of mentioned before that, that hockey comes down a lot of times to individual races, whether it's the pucks in the corners, whether it's to um, uh, you know getting to loose pucks in front of the net, or in this case, recognizing your situation and where you are. So in this case, you know Greg, who's getting really pretty good at crossover. First thing, instead of taking and pushing off with just that right leg, get that strong, powerful crossover, right? To get you going up the ice. Um, then get those quick, heavy strides, right? And it's a foot race. You're running one with this guy. And you have some advantage here too, right? For one thing, you already have separation. So if you are, you know, pushing hard from the start, you might even be able to beat this guy because he's further back away from you. He has to turn his hips to get back, right? You don't have to. Your hips are already turned. You're moving at full speed down the ice. So if you take that, give those two strong crossovers, two, three, four strong crossovers, um, and then push hard to get past him as quickly as possible so you can curve back in, hopefully well before you get within you know, a couple of goalie sticks range of this uh, uh, you know, tendy here, uh, you're going to be in a good spot. Um, so I think that's that's key number one. And then once you do that, right, again, that, that hard turn back. Uh, let's take another another quick look at that here. We'll get that back at some point. Thank you. The easy ways to be the defenseman. And, you know, he has a couple of other um, uh, options in here as well that, um, you know, you should definitely check out. 
uh, for a couple of other options. I think this one works best in this particular situation, right? Uh, but again, push that, get that across back on your forehand um, so that you can make a play on the goalie, right? And again, the more separation you have, the more speed you have, the more you're able to make that hard turn, uh, the more you're going to be able to focus on, let's put a good shot on that after I've beaten this guy and gotten back to the center of the ice. Oh, there we go, slow motion again. Look at those hard crossovers. And those crossovers are key because they get your momentum going from a stop significantly better, especially once you get strong with them uh, compared to you know just pushing off with a single leg. You're engaging more muscles. You're working more quickly. Excellent way to start from that sort of stop position that Greg found himself in. Um, let's take a look at somebody that was able to do that to us on... Uh, a recent game. Now, this was against the Green Goblins, who were the number one team in the league. Um, and we ended up pulling off the upset. This is great. Um, so I say this is kind of a similar situation because this is a hard, wide charge. And uh, they're going to do something very similar to what, they're uh, what we're trying to talk about here, which is get wide, make the turn back inside, and then look for a way to beat the goalie. Now, it's a little bit different here because the goalie stick handed, I'm sorry, because of stick handedness and what side of the ice he's on, but the concept is the same. And I want to show you what happens when you're able to make that hard turn instead of trying to shoot from down here, right? So when you're able to make that hard turn, okay, now as a goalie, when I'm looking at this, I'm going, okay, he's got a couple of different options. He could take it back to this post. And if he does, I'm probably okay. That's not a huge distance from there. His his speed isn't so fast where I'm not going to be able to cover down there. And I know, honestly, he's probably not going to do that. Uh, the play here is to get yourself in the center of the ice because and get the goalie moving because that opens up holes, right? And that's exactly what he does. Actually, maybe even gets a little bit too close to me. I could have tried for a poke check there. I decided not to. But look what happens when you get the goalie moving, especially a shorter goalie like me, right? He actually does a good job. And look at all these holes that are here, right? Me, I'm a beginning goalie, so I'm going, oh, man, I I messed this up, right? Well, not a great pad slide here, but even if I am in a great pad slide, you've still got space here to the far side. You've got a hole underneath the goalie's glove that you can go to. The classic move, especially if you get the goalie's leg open, is just sneak it between the five hole, right? You don't got to lift the puck for that. You don't got to hit you know, the side of the net. Just put it right through his legs into the back of the net. Now, what our friend here is going to try and do is lift it here into this top corner, but he fires a little too late, and he's going to put it just by the post there, just a bit outside, literally just a bit. Not a not a major league, just a bit outside, right? But it's the same concept. You know, guard against the poke check from the inside, cut back to the middle, get the goalie moving, open up those holes, look particularly for the five hole or the hole on the far side, and see if you can get that up and over. And they almost scored there, right? You know, it's 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 very different from a goalie's perspective of facing that versus you know facing shots that are down at these lower angles. You know, this is one that isn't quite the same, but is much closer to the the shot that Greg took from you know, the other side of the ice. It, it's so hard to score from this because I have so little to cover um, as a goalie. I don't have to move uh, to my left except perhaps to cover a pass across. Um, you know, it's easy for me to get by and seal this post, easy for me to get down, and there's not a lot of room over my shoulders. Very hard to hit something on this far half of the net from there if the goalie is playing you square. Uh, it's nicely squared up. And you may, you know, especially against someone like me who's only 5'6", you may have a hole here over this top side. Less of a hole if the goalie is playing out being aggressive. Um, so a much harder shot to try and make. Um, then if you're able to get back into that center of the ice and open up every single option, right? Um, you want to probably keep it a little bit further away from this if you can. You know, if I were coaching him and look at him, he's even, he's even lifting that toe, right? Trying to get that sharp turn, right? And say, cut it even sharper, right? He maybe starts his, his turn a little too late. If he starts a little bit sooner, and gets himself even a little bit further out up here, that's going to get the goalie moving out up even more. Um, you know, Especially for somebody that's shorter like me, if I stay back in the net and I don't respond to that, then you open up even more, right? So you know, try and keep yourself in that one and a half goalie stick lengths uh, away uh, from the goalie there to really open things up. Um, in this case, he you know, 
got a little bit closer in. And honestly, that made it a little bit easier for me because I had less to cover. By the time he's on that far side of the net, you know, I've got a leg down. He's only going to, if he puts it on the ice, he's only going to have a play there. Probably sneak it through my legs, um, but he's not going to get it on this far side. I've got my blocker out. All right. So a lot of opportunities to stop that. So anyways, hope that's helpful. Hope everybody got something out of that. Please check out um, at I Train Hockey. Um, I'll put a link to um, uh, his channel um, into the video description. Um, but it is just I Train T R A I N <laughs> Hockey. Um, check out the video uh, as well. Um, uh, three different ways to split the defenseman. Uh, that's all I got for today, though. Whoever you are, wherever you might be, thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.